Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Azure on Blog. Today, we are talking with Aditya Balaji. He's the PM for Azure Backup, and he's going to talk to us about some improvements in alerting when you're doing backup. So if something fails, something goes wrong, how do you get your team to know about it so that you can act on it? So stay tuned. <music> Hey, Aditya, how are you? Hi, Pierre. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So we've got some news or some uh, improvements with uh, Azure Backup. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, so Azure Backup has, uh, uh, has a bunch of monitoring features. As, as, as you might know, we have things like Backup Center, we have Backup Jobs, we have reports and things like that. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we have al always had is alerting, where we used to send email notifications uh, when backups failed or when there were certain uh, security scenarios that we felt users might want to be made aware of. What, but what we have also do, started doing is actually integrating more natively with Azure Monitor so that we can provide all the goodness that Azure Monitor offers to our end customers. So right now, with these Azure Monitor-based integrations, customers have much more flexibility and, uh, and they have a wide range of uh, choices in terms of notifications and being able to take more proactive action on their alerts so that uh, that, that, so that they can achieve much greater operational efficiencies. So if we're looking at uh, integration with the Azure Monitor, uh, does that mean that I could write my own custo queries in Azure Monitor uh, to query, let's say, if the backup of my production environment fails, send me an alert, but if my backup of my development uh, environment fails uh, based on resource groups or tags, uh, then alert a different uh, group. Is that something like that that we could do? Uh, yes, that's a great question. So, uh, so what you're saying is very much possible. And just to take a step back, so there are many different ways in which we integrate with Azure Monitor today because there are different kinds of requirements that might come up uh, in the context of alerting. So mm -hmm. one of the ways we integrate with is um, uh, the, is called built-in Azure Monitor alerts for backup, where for certain uh, default scenarios that uh, all users believe that a backup product should fundamentally have, we, we provide a seamless way for customers to get alerts without needing to, uh, uh, to, to do too much additional configuration. Okay. So, uh, uh, so Probably what I can do is I can I, I can show you my screen and uh, to, to give a better idea of what uh, I'm talking about. Okay, let me. Okay, let's bring it in. Great. So if you can see, we have the backup center here, and what you'll also see now is a tab uh, is a tile for active alerts, and mm -hmm. this actually refers to the alerts which are coming from the Azure Monitor based systems. So we have two things here. One is the Azure Virtual Machines and one is called the Global Alerts. So, uh, so just to put it in simple terms, uh, Global Alerts refers to those alerts which, which don't have a an association with a particular backup item. Like let's say it's at a vault level. So for example, let's say somebody had disabled soft delete functionality for that entire vault because of which any backup item under that vault, which gets deleted either accidentally or maliciously, uh, will no longer go through that 14 day soft, uh, soft delete period. Yeah. So global alerts are things which are um, uh, uh, associated to the vault as a whole and not an individual data source. Okay. But on the other hand, there could also be alerts on an individual data source. Like let's say somebody has explicitly gone and deleted uh, backup data for the virtual machine. Or let's say, like you mentioned, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, a backup or a restore for the virtual machine has actually failed. So, so, those, so those come up as alerts under Azure Virtual Machine Backup. And as you can see here, there are two types. One is security and one is configured alerts. So security alerts are alerts that Azure Backup sends by default and surfaces them via Azure Monitor and Backup Center. And these are alerts that all users receive irrespective of their configuration. And why this is important is that uh, there could be certain scenarios where due to some unfortunate incident in an organization, a malicious admin kind of uh, wants to disable any security features so that the right people are not made aware. 
the benefit of actually now uh, surfacing the security alerts by default, irrespective of um, uh, of the user's configuration, is that this, these alerts can't be subverted by a rogue admin. Uh, and, and and you might ask the question, like if, if the alerts are there by default for every user, won't there be a lot of uh, noise with respect to the large number of emails generated? Oh, sorry, I was you just going to ask, yes. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yes. So in terms of um, that, so one important distinction to make is alert versus a notification. So an alert is something that we generate uh, th that we generate and it is something that uh, uh, that is shown on the portal uh, without needing to do any additional configuration. The notification is something that is still in the hands of the user. So let's say uh, for certain kinds of, uh, 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 for, of subscriptions, let's say they are test subscriptions and users need not actually get notified if something is deleted. They can choose not to enable notifications for vaults in that subscription. But let's say there has been... Um, uh, there are certain production subscriptions where they do want notifications for every failure. What the customer can do is that they can actually create a, a, a notification, which in Azure monitor terminology, it's called an alert processing rule. So let me probably also walk, walk through the process of creating an alert processing rule. Okay. So if I switch my tab in the browser, so essentially, this is a vault which uh, uh, which which has a couple of backup items, and uh, and so uh, and and the way the organization wants to um, uh, uh, get alerted is that the, uh, the way these are set up today is that we have uh, a, a one VM which belongs to um, uh, one application. Uh, called web app one and the second vm belongs to a second application which is which is called web app two and this and the application associated to both of these vms is actually identified with the vm uh, tag and so uh, what uh, 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 what the scenario uh, the scenario we are looking for here is that let's say whenever an alert is gen generated on any of these uh, backup items uh, uh, it, it, it's very possible that um, uh, different applications will, are actually owned by different people. And let's mm -hmm. say a, a, a critical operation on um, virtual machine in web app one needs to be resolved by one set of people, whereas uh, a, a critical alert on virtual machine two needs to be resolved by a different set of people. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so what the organization would like to do is so so this is an example of uh, a sample uh, logic app which uh, which the organization has, gen has generated to actually be able to decide where to route these alerts so okay. i'll probably walk through this logic app and then i'll talk about how we can hook the alert to this logic app so that you can get the notification to the right channel so essentially the logic app is configured to receive any http request with the schema of the alerts and since we are using azure monitor based alerts we leverage the standard alerts schema which azure monitor supports for all resources so from that point of view you no know, the customers don't need to learn any new schema just to be able to uh, parse and manage backup alerts and so uh, and and so the logic app gets gets the uh, gets the details of the alert it 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 it, it identifies things like no oh, what was the affected resource what are the subscription resource group it gets all those things from the alert body and then what it does here is that it checks what is the type of the item is it a virtual machine or is it a database because uh, uh, because the, the 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 user has a, has a, has a scenario where uh, alerts on virtual machines need to actually be routed to the infrastructure team whereas alerts on databases need to be routed to the database team and yep. even within and even within infrastructure alerts, um, the, 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 the VMs could be belonging to different applications. So what this part of the branch does is that it actually uh, checks what was the tag of the affected VM. And based on the tag of the affected VM, it chooses to route it either to the, the first team, team's channel, which is, uh, which is for the application one, or for the second team's channel, which is uh, used by members of application two. So this is essentially the logic that the uh, that the organization wants to achieve, and now we'll look at how um, you want to act. You can actually route your alerts to this logic app so that the the, the alert is routed to the right notification channel. Okay. So if I go back to uh, the tab where I had the recovery services vault, what I'll do is I'll go to the alerts tab, 
and and this shows me the list of all the um, alerts that were uh, g- generated. Mm-hmm. And what I'll do is I'll go create an alert processing rule. So in in very simple terms, there are uh, th- uh, there are different uh, concepts which 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 you might see here. One is the alert rule, one is the action group, and one is the alert processing rule. So alert rule is essentially a condition. Uh, which which defines uh, is a rule which defines under what conditions uh, an alert should be fired. Uh, in the case of these def- built-in Azure Monitor alerts, since we are generating these alerts by default, customers don't need to create an explicit alert rule for the creation of these alerts. Uh, th- these would probably uh, apply in other kinds of scenarios like metric-based alerts or log-based alerts, which I will, uh, which which we'll probably come to a little later. But okay. but for these default Azure Monitor alerts, we don't need to create an alert rule, which makes it much simpler. Yeah. And so the only thing that they need to do is actually create a notification. And for the notification, there are two concepts. So one is called the action group, which is the actual notification channel. It could either be an email address. It could be uh, an SMS uh, 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 number. It could be uh, an ITSM channel. And in this case, it will be a logic app. So because what we're doing is we are first sending the alert to the logic app to do some business logic and then send it to the end channel, which is the team's uh, notification channel. Okay. So that is essentially what an action group is. And an alert processing rule basically specifies which alerts should be routed to which notification channels under which conditions. So for example, I can say, create an alert processing rule such that all alerts with severity zero are sent to this particular email address or this particular uh, logic app. So that is essentially what I will first create. So if I go to alert processing rules, I can I can create, I, I can click on create, uh, then I can select a scope. In this case, just to keep it simple, I will scope it to the vault that I'm looking to monitor. But in reality, you can actually uh, scope an alert processing rule to span all alerts within a subscription. Okay. But for now, just to keep it simple, I'll just do it for a single vault. Then comes the rule setting. So, uh, 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 so alert processing rules have many different capabilities. So, in in our in our particular scenario, what we want to do is actually make sure that the alert gets routed to a notification channel or an action group. Uh, so, this is what I will select here. And now I have, to, uh, and now I can either choose to add an existing action group which I might have already created, or create an action group in line right from this experience. So what I'll need to do here is essentially define the, uh, the uh, define the action group to point to that logic app which we just uh, sh- which we just saw. Yeah, and those action so, groups are are reusable. So if you've already created one for application A, you can basically just reuse it for application B. Exactly. That that's a good point. So if we already have an action group existing, we can we can use that same action group in the alert processing rule without needing to create a separate one for each application or resource. Yeah. So what I'll do here is that I'll select action as logic app, and it shows me the list of all logic apps already in the scope, and this is the one I want. And then yeah, so so in our case, we do use the common alert schema. So uh, you can uh, you can optionally mention this as yes, though it doesn't make a difference in our in, in this particular scenario. And I click on OK and I give it a name. And uh, yeah, so my organization requires me to add tags for every resource, otherwise the resource fails. So like 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 a tag every other resource, I can also assign tags to the logic app, so mm-hmm. to the action group, I beg your pardon. And then I go to review and create. Uh, I can choose to, I, to, to, to even test the action group before I uh, actually go ahead and create it. That's another cool feature which Azure Monitor has added recently. and then I create the action group. Yeah. So I, I, while this is creating, um, this is pretty much exactly the same as if you go directly into Azure Monitor to create the alert in there and the notifications in there. 
Exactly. So, uh, so, so what we are looking to do is essentially leverage uh, standard Azure-based services for different management at scale requirements. It could either be governing, it could be monitoring, or it could be uh, uh, it could be things like reporting. Uh, and since Azure Monitor is the standard solution for um, uh, managing all Azure services, which includes backup. Uh, using Azure Monitor based alerts helps users have a consistent experience for uh, for managing all their alerts. Yeah. And so what? So, yeah. So it doesn't matter if you start the process from the Azure backup uh, management pane or the backup center management pane, and when you click on alert and and keep going, you're still getting the same experience as if you were in Azure Monitor creating that uh, that alert and that uh, processing role. Exactly. That, yes, that that's a good point. And one thing which we also uh, uh, do just to help uh, the customers of backup is in the backup center, we, we kind of try to provide a more contextual experience so that customers can alert not just by the top level properties, but also by some of the backup specific properties, like what was the workload type being backed up, what uh, what, what was the vault, what uh, uh, and things like that. So that customers have a more contextual experience in managing the backup alerts. But having said that, what you mentioned about uh, this being on par with actually going to Azure Monitor and and configuring the same alert is spot on. OK, perfect. So once I create this action group, I go ahead to the next um, steps of actually uh, creating an alert processing rules. So yeah, in this case, I want to be I want the alert processing rule to apply all the time whenever a new alert is generated. And here I basically um, create uh, the name of the, the name and uh, description of the alert processing rule. And again, I will need to tag these resources so that the organ so that the policy doesn't um, deny the creation of this resource. So I will go ahead and do that. Tagging is very important for operations purposes. Uh, so I'm glad that you're seeing that you're doing it, even if it's in a demo environment. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> yes, I agree. All right, so we create the alert. So now it has everything and it's created. Okay. Yes, and so uh, so, so yeah, so the alert process so so the alert processing rule has now been created, and essentially this vault has been hooked to this logic app. So now what I'll do is I will try to um, uh, simulate an alert and show how that actually gets uh, routed to the required notification channel. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so for simplicity, what I'll probably do is um, uh, a, a trigger a security alert, which in this case will be the deletion of backup data for one of the VMs. The deletion in the real world could either be accidental or malicious, but it is a critical scenario that needs to be alerted on. Having Absolutely. said that, yeah, having said that, this um, these notifications uh, will also apply for any uh, backup or restore failure that is uh, generated uh, of uh, for this wall, uh, because okay. we also we also do surface backup and restore failure alerts uh, as default uh, Azure Monitor alerts. And uh, just one nuance before I go into that is that um, for the job failure alerts. It is possible that some users may not want an alert for every uh, every single job failure, and they might be using other things like uh, like custom queries to be uh, 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 to generate alerts for those failures. So so that so that users don't get duplicate alerts for these job failures, we do uh, we do pro uh, we do provide an opt-in kind of thing where customers need to you know, register a flag if they want to. Uh, get alerted for these job failure scenarios as well via default Azure Monitor alerts. So that is something that the customer can control, which is why you might have seen that the uh, job failure alerts shows up under configured alerts and not under security alerts, because those can be turned on or off by the user. But okay. security alerts are something which can't be turned off. Only the notification is in the hands of the uh, end user. So what I'll do here is I'll go and uh, trigger a delete backup data. So uh, it, it might be that there is a script in the uh, organization that is uh, unintentionally uh, deleting a production resource due to some issue. Here, I'll just try to simulate that in the portal uh, to, uh, to, to, show, to show an accidental deletion scenario. And let me go on 
and click on stop backup and this operation will will run mm -hmm. and once it runs we should see an alert so while we're waiting for the alert uh as you mentioned it your logic app will decide where the alert uh, gets routed uh but what if somebody doesn't want to have like it, the action group do you still have the capabilities of sending the alert let's say to a very specific email address or to a teams channel or uh to anything like on top of being uh processed by your uh, logic app Yes, that's a great question. So, uh, so what you're saying also does work. So, if I actually go and um, kind of create a, a, a kind of go over that action group uh, options which we saw earlier. So, mm -hmm. just give me a second. Yes. So, what you can also see is that uh, when you create an action group. Um, So we have uh, we have some op some options to actually send an uh, an alert directly to an email address. So you can either email it to an Azure Resource Manager role, which, which for example, if you want to email it to the subscription owner or the subscription admin uh, of the subscription where the alert is generated, you can choose to uh, no uh, you, can, you can choose this option, which is emailing to an Azure Resource Manager role. Or let's say you want to email it to a specific email address, like my email address or your email address. You can yeah. enter this option, which which kind of allows you to specify an email address that you want to send it to. Okay. And apart from the email options, uh, we also have many other uh, kinds of uh, actions available. So what we saw earlier was the logic app, but you can also directly send it to an ITSM uh, channel like a ServiceNow, or you can, or, or if you want to uh, uh, to run some scripts before actually sending, uh, 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 before actually sending the alert elsewhere, you can you can send it to a runbook or a function, and similarly to other custom endpoints like a webhook. So. Uh, so in that way, Action Groups are, offers a lot of flexibility in terms of which notification channel you want to send alerts to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, Azure Backup onboarding to that helps us leverage all the goodness of these Action Groups. Okay, so you could have multiple uh, that are either uh, running in parallel. So you'd have the the your your processing role that goes through your business logic and alerts the right people. But you could also have an action that runs a... Uh, 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 a run book where there's a PowerShell uh, in and to basically restart the backup if you've stopped it, for example. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so did we get our alert like, yet? Yeah, it looks like this operation has completed. And now let me just check if I'm able to see it in the alert. So as you see, there is now an additional alert. And hopefully, this should also show up in the Teams channel. So yes. Uh, so, uh, so so since I'd, I had deleted the data of the VM belonging to web app one, you can see it is the alert is getting generated in this channel in this team channel, which is for the web app one. And this has all the data related to the alert, like uh, the, the description of the alert, the recommended action, the affected VMs, the affected vaults, and things like that. So uh, so in this way, uh, the, the the action group actually helped us decide which um, uh, what to do with the alert how to identify which application it's attached to and depending on that send it to the required uh, the required notification channel so that the right people can look at it and uh, and the alert gets traction that's very cool uh, so i like the uh, i this is really something i had not thought of before is using logic app to basically parse through the uh, body of the alert and make decisions based on which machine through the alert where the 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 default occurred uh, in order to write to the right people and then to send it to a teams channel versus putting something in somebody's email that might be missed if that person's not at the office for example uh, i hadn't really not put those two things before together i would have just done a whole bunch of 
Costo queries in Azure Monitor and created it, but I, I find that uh, your uh, your way of using Logic App is uh, it's very streamlined and also very uh, easy to manage. I find because of the, the the graphical nature of Logic App plus. It does allow you to plug into multiple connectors. So, in terms of Teams or other channels, or whether or not you're running a Slack channel for or or any of those um, communication uh, methods. So that's really cool. Um, let's say you have a company that has like a lot of different subscriptions and tenants and they have all of the same backup uh procedures across all because of the uh, corporate standards is there a way to get this like to uh, as part of your infrastructure as code or programmatically uh deploy those types of alerts and those types of uh, uh notification uh yes definitely so uh, uh, uh so again you can use um uh, the existing programmatic interfaces which Azure Monitor supports. So, uh, 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 so I think you no, know, we have uh, we we have a lot of detailed documentation in terms of how to create an alert processing rule and an action group using PowerShell, CLI, and other interfaces. And and yes, so uh, uh, so essentially all of these uh, all of these these things in terms of rule creation and the creation of a notification channel can be done via you know, all these different programmatic interfaces that Azure supports. Okay. Um, you showed us earlier the configuration alert versus the security alert. Uh, in your uh, Azure portal, is there a way where I see like all of the alerts, like regardless where uh, they were generated for or what type of alerts they are, like in one kind of listing. Uh, yes. So, uh, yeah. So, 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 uh, so again, if we go back to the earlier uh, classification uh, that we talked about, right? So we have um, uh, we have these built-in Azure Monitor alerts which are fired by default. Then we have these metric-based alerts, and then we have. Uh, and, and customers can always write um, custom alerts on the data and log analytics if they have configured the walls to send data to an LA workspace. So today, if you see in um, uh, in Backup Center, we, uh, we we surface information on um, uh, on the built-in Azure Monitor alerts and metric alerts. So both of these alerts can be viewed from within a single pane of glass. Uh, so custom log alerts based on the log analytics data is something that we haven't integrated in Backup Center as yet, but that is something which is definitely in our roadmap. If, if users have written alerts on their data and log analytics, yes, they will continue to work and users can manage them by going to a log analytics workspace or via Azure Monitor. But actually also in, uh, integrating with Backup Center to be able to see your custom log alerts in a, in a single place is something that we're actively working on. But the, the current state is that we, we show the built-in Azure Monitor alerts and the metric-based alerts. So all of the metric-based alerts also come under configured alerts because th those are things that the user um, configures by explicitly creating an, al an alert rule. And users can actually see in the alerts uh, pane, they can, they, they can select signal type as either metric or log. So log in this case refers to the built-in Azure Monitor alerts because they, that, 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 that those alerts are more verbose and are and, and resemble logs. But if customers want to see metric based alerts, they can filter for metric alerts and see all the metric alerts based on their alert rules that were fired in the last uh, uh, in the last 24 hours up to the last 30 days based on the current uh, retention. And uh, I think this is also a good uh, segue to actually talk about uh, th this uh, concept of metric alerts, uh, since we have so far been talking about uh, the built-in Azure Monitor alerts. Mm -hmm. So where uh, metric alerts comes in is that um, let's say uh, uh, let's say users have uh, additional scenarios for which they want to generate alert on. So for, uh, so for example, in the built-in Azure Monitor alerts, I, I, I mentioned that we send alerts for security scenarios and failure scenarios. But very often there could be users who also want to get informational alerts if their backups have succeeded, just to make sure that the, uh, that their backups are healthy and the right people are informed about it. Or let's say they may not want to get alerted on every single backup failure, 
but might want to get alerted only if there were two consecutive backup failures or three consecutive backup failures so that uh, uh, so that only the most critical ones are, uh, are uh, which which affect our which affect their rpo are actually you no know, kind of uh, alerted on so okay. metric alerts enables customers to actually um uh, use uh, 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 to get more flexibility in terms of which backup health scenarios they want to get alerted on. So if so, so how this works is that Azure Backup surfaces a set of default um, metrics uh, uh, so for people to use. And uh, alerts are not generated by default here. So it, customers can choose to create uh, alerts on based on which metrics and which thresholds they are interested in. So if I go to backup center and click on metrics, I can actually go select a scope. In, uh, in this case, I'll just select it um, at a single uh, vault level, uh, just for simplicity. But, mm -hmm. uh, 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 but in the real world, the users can also see uh, uh, metrics for multiple vaults within the same subscription and region, which is the yeah. maximum scope that we support today. So as, so as you can see, there are two metrics we have now. We, we do plan to add more in the future, but right now there are two health, uh, health metrics, which are backup health events and restore health events. And the way uh, you, 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 would, you should think about this is that um, uh, whenever a backup job completes, a backup health event is emitted. And depending on whether the job succeeded or failed, the dimension uh, associated with that metric changes so uh, uh, so so I'll, so I'll, I'll I'll walk through that so so, uh, so so by default the metric is at the level of a vault which is the top level arm resource supported by Azure backup mm -hmm. and, and and by default when the user selects backup health event the chart here essentially shows a count of all the backup jobs that executed for this vault in the selected time range now let's say I want to find out among these which were how, how many were successful jobs? What I'll do is I'll add a filter, which basically uh, helps me filter on the health status, and yep. I can choose a value of healthy. So essentially, what happens is that whenever a backup job uh, succeeds, a backup health event is emitted with the status healthy. So if I want to see a trend of all the successful backups that happened in the last 24 hours, for example, I'll I'll choose backup health events and filter for health status healthy. And suppose, uh, let's say, I want to um, uh, look at all, look at the jobs which which didn't succeed. So you can see uh, multiple different states here, and I'll and I'll talk a bit through this. So we have uh, we have something called degraded and something called unhealthy. So essentially, unhealthy is refers to the scenario when there is some issue with the Azure Backup Service and the customer's vault is unhealthy because of a service issue which they really can't fix themselves. Then uh, job failures, which are associated to such uh, um, uh, 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 to such scenarios where uh, the vault, uh, where, where Azure Backup Service itself is not uh, is not healthy, uh, for, for those scenarios, the the the, the health status uh, is unhealthy. But let's say the job is failing because of some user error, and let's say a small fix at the end of the user can actually make sure the backup succeed. That is the uh, so 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 those backup failures are actually emitted with the with the status as degraded. So okay. this is the distinction between unhealthy and degraded. Where degraded are things which the user themselves can fix by making sure that the configuration is correct, and unhealthy is scenarios where for for for, for some reason, though it, 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 hopefully it, it shouldn't be very frequent, but in scenarios where there might be let's say an outage or an um, or, or a maintenance and things like that. Um, and there is an issue with the Azure backup service itself that the user can't fix manually, that those uh, get emitted with the status unhealthy. And one more useful thing that is there here is the concept of transient and persistent. So, uh, so let's say a user wants to track uh, items which have long running job failures. Um, th this field of persistent and transient will actually help them there. So essentially what happens is that whenever a job fails for the first time, and let's say it is you due to a service error, then the health event will be emitted with the dimension transient unhealthy. But let's say there is another failure for the same backup item in the same vault, then 
it uh, the next time the health event gets emitted it will get emitted with the status persistent unhealthy because there is uh, because there is persistently an issue now and uh, 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 which has uh, which has basically affected multiple backups so essentially that's the distinction between transient and persi uh, and persistent and uh, users can, can can use that to distinguish those items which had transient failures versus those items which are having persistent long running failures okay so this is on the health status and one more important thing is that no many uh, this all this so far is at the level of a recovery services vault but uh, I, 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 but there are many users who have like hundreds of backup items per vault and mm -hmm. they actually want to know um, within the vault which backup items were actually unhealthy and which backup items caused the value of the metric to rise or dip so you uh, so, so users can make use of other dimensions as well so we have something called uh, the backup instance name where the user can say uh, I, I want to see uh, the, the the count of health events for this particular uh, file share which was backed up so now they'll actually be able to see the metric at the level of a backup item uh, associated to the vault so that they can actually drill down into which item actually had the failure and uh, and, and and decide if they need to take any action and in a similar way there are other kinds of pa parameters like they can select if they want to see the, the health metrics only for VMs or only for file shares, they can choose to select the required data source type so that the below chart gets filtered. So all of this so far was about how people can view these metrics and consume these metrics in the portal. And now let's say you, users want to be able to generate an alert on this metric. Okay, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, so still now we have looked at how we can actually uh, uh, consume the metric in the portal, but let's say a user also wants to generate an alert for that metric. So what they'll do is they can click on new alert rule and they can, uh, and some of this gets pre-populated. And let's say they want to uh, get alerted whenever there has been uh, multiple backup failures for an item. So what they can do is they can, um, uh, they, they can select health status, um, as you no, know, whenever it was either persistent degraded or transient unhealthy, meaning that whenever there has been a failure for uh, this uh, item, which could be which could be due to any reason, either degraded or unhealthy, yeah. and they can say whenever the count of it is greater than one, meaning there were multiple such health events with these uh, und undesired statuses. Okay. Then what they can do is they can actually select the frequency and uh, period of uh, evaluation. Like let's say they want the alert rule to run every uh, a, a, a every day and 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 look back uh, in the last um, uh, in the last twenty four hours. What they can do is they can select look back uh, uh, look back period of twenty four hours and they can configure the alert rule to uh, to, uh, to run at the frequency they are looking for. And essentially, once they do that, they can they can basically um, uh, go and um, uh, configure this alert as well to an action group. And as we discussed in the earlier uh, part, we can uh, if they have an existing action group for routing alerts, they can use the same action group, or they can create a new action group. And uh, and then they can basically specify which severity they want the alert to be fired for, and um, uh, and, and enter details like the alert rule name, the, the, the resource group it should be created under, and things like that. One more uh, interesting feature is the ability to automatically resolve alerts. So let's say, um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So let's say uh, you you, uh, you you had an alert and um, it gets um, uh, 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 and then then due due to some underlying issue. Uh, failures keep happening uh, again and again. This will actually um, cause um, alerts to um, uh, to be sent again and again. So, but 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 in the case of metrics, we actually have uh, we, are, we are, there are two concepts. One is the concept of stateful alerts, and one is the concept of stateless alerts. So, stateful alerts essentially mean that when um, an alert has been uh, generated. And let's say in the next cycle of the alert rule evaluation, the condition is still true. A new alert is not generated. Uh, and, and, and whenever, uh, let's say somebody has fixed the issue and, um, and the next uh, three evaluations of the alert rule 
all uh, all look fine and and it didn't find any failure in that period the alert gets automatically resolved by the service and the next time a failure occurs only then a new alert is generated so it's kind of like a way to reduce uh, noise so well, if you and that's very important cuz i've in my career i've seen so many times where people set up alerts and once they get to a certain number of alerts they like ah oh, they just basically either stop looking at the alerts because it becomes noise because uh, they say oh i looked at this and it's fine but i for some reason i keep getting the alert yes that is true so yeah. yes so essentially what they can do is they can uh, they can they can select automatically resolve alerts if they want the alert to be stateful and reduce noise but let's say users do want to get alerted for every single failure just to make sure that uh, that the alert gets required traction they can also choose to make it stateless by removing this checkbox and when it's stateless every time the metric condition evaluates to true a new alert gets generated so okay. this is essentially how we create a metric alert rule based on the metrics that you're interested in and um, uh, a a and similar to the built-in azure monitor alerts these can be routed to this the to one uh, to an action group wow <laughs> uh, i i see uh, so much potential in there um that last one specifically in terms of managing the noise in 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 uh, inboxes and teams channel or whatever the your the the way you you notify uh, your people and your teams that actions or events uh, have happened or not happened uh, i think it's going to be huge uh again the way you've using or leveraging uh, logic apps to filter and parse the information to decide uh programmatically where that information is going to be sent to which channel to a team's channel versus somebody's inbox uh, i think it is fantastic uh aditya i this was very very uh useful if somebody uh is trying this and they want more information where should they go Yes, so we do. Uh, we have documented these scenarios in the Azure Backup documentation. So if customers go to monitor and alerts, they can actually see an overview of the different monitoring and alerting and reporting options, and along with guidance on when to use what. And having said that, um, you know, if there are any other questions, please feel free to write to ask Azure Backup Team at Microsoft.com, and one of us will be very happy to answer your questions. Well, you've uh, taken the words out of my mouth. I was going to ask if somebody has feedbacks or questions, where do they, how do they get in touch with you? And there it is. And all those links and uh, informations are going to be in the descriptions below. So uh, Aditya, thank you very much for taking the time and walking us through uh, setting up those alerts and those notifications for Azure Backup. Uh, this was very uh, informative and, and useful. So thank you very much. Th thank you so much, Pierre. All right. And for you at home uh, watching, uh, stay tuned to the uh, IT Ops Talks channel for more content like this. And if you have any suggestions or scenarios you want us to uh, explore, make sure to tell us in the comments below. Thank you very much. Have a good day.